Now listen, I'm sure no one is going to have an opinion on this video, but... Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett. Welcome to Real Guitar Talk, this video series where I'm tackling subjects that I think pertain to the modern guitar player that I at least haven't seen spoken of in kind of an open way. Today I want to talk about five things that a lot of guitar players usually get wrong. All right, obviously, many of you aren't going to get these things wrong. Many of you are going to know this, but it's, you know, there's a lot of things that I see kind of floating out there. People love their mantras. A lot of this is mantras and platitudes that guitar players like to rely on. And many of them are just not true. But a good video title wouldn't be five things that many guitar players sometimes get right, but not really, and sometimes they get them wrong. And let's all be friends and talk about our differences. No, nobody would click on that video. You had to click on this video. So, without further ado, number five. Tube amps are always better. This one is luckily kind of dying off a little bit. And part of that is because digital technology is getting so much better than it used to be. And solid state, just general solid state technology as well. One of the overarching themes of this video that you're going to see is... Something that's good is good, something that's not good is not good, and it's not necessarily quantifiable by these little things. But I, I know a lot of people who, you know, no, it's got to be a tube amp, tube amps are better, this and that and that and this. You know, and I'll tell you, some of my favorite tones that I've ever gotten, in fact, my favorite lead tone that I have ever achieved was using Line 6 Native, plugged direct into the computer. <laughs> And I've never matched that tone with a live rig. And this is coming from someone who prefers tube amps. I generally like tube amps better. They have a 3D quality to them, they have a depth, they have a natural tone to them. But there are plenty of tones you can point at that people have gotten over the years. Uh, famous guitar players have gotten with solid state amps, plugged directly into old analog desks, all kinds of different things. You know, nowadays, again, as I mentioned, the digital world, there are just so many great ways to get tones outside of the realm of tube amps that you really shouldn't limit yourself to just locking down and saying, no, it's got to be a tube amp or, or it's, it's nothing. There are probably some great tones that you know that you might not even know weren't recorded on a tube amp. Now, in that same vein, number four, you have to be loud in order to get good tone. This is another one that really drives me crazy that a lot of guitar players like to say. And I think the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of guitar players just like to play loud. And so we kind of use that as an excuse. Now, there are certainly some classic tones that are achieved the natural way, let's say, by cranking a tube amp to really loud volumes. That's almost never the case of how you need to get tones anymore, though, with the, again, the development of uh, digital technology, with pedals, with attenuators. There are all kinds of ways to get these tones at more reasonable volumes. And also, there are just a lot of great tones you can get at low volumes. There are really nice clean tones and even some overdriven tones you can get if you really know how to dial in an amp particularly with a tube amp, let's say, the tone stack tends to change character-wise the louder you get. The treble gets more trebly, the mid gets more punchy, the bass gets a lot woofier and bigger. Everything gets bigger as you turn up. It just kind of blooms. Well, if you follow that logic, then if you turn the amp way down, you have more range on the knobs. You can turn the treble up higher than you would if the amp were louder. You can, the same with the other two. There are a lot of great ways you can get amazing tones at low volumes. But most of us just want to play loud all the time. Number three, big strings have better tone. This one I think has generally been debunked now, and I, I've seen this more over the past several years. Rick Beato came out with a big video where they were testing different strings. But this is another one. I still see players kind of being a little too macho about using heavy strings and how that makes you a real player and all this and that. Big strings generally just have a more pronounced low end, and particularly more lower mids. Well, I'm usually trying to fight off the lower mids anyway. In fact, if you look at how a guitar sits in the mix, lower mids often just make your whole sound muddier. And if you cut that out, the guitar punches through cleaner and doesn't compete with the other instruments as much. I used to play primarily with 10s. Now I play with a combination of 10s or 9s, depending on the scale length of the guitar. But I actually found that I prefer the tone of the 9s. Again, they just kind of cut out a little bit of that lower mid-range that I feel like I'm always trying to fight off anyway. And many of you know the famous story of B.B. King and Billy Gibbons, where B.B. King was playing Billy Gibbons' guitar, which had heavier strings, 
And because that's how Billy thought you got the big tone. And BB said, why are you working so hard? Because BB used lighter gauge strings. So hopefully that one's been pretty well put to rest. But again, I still see people out there talking about how you got to use heavy strings if you want to be a real guitar player. Number two, I'm not going to harp on this one too much because I've done a whole video on this. Tone is in your fingers. This one drives me bonkers. And it, it, it's true in a way. There are two different ways that people look at this. Tone is in your fingers can mean two different things. It can mean you have to be good, a good player, in order to get good tone. Like, if you're not a good player, you're never really going to make it sound that good. The other way people look at it is you're always going to kind of sound like you, no matter what. There's some truth to both, and there's uh, some lies in both, but someone in the comments summed it up perfectly in my other video about tone is in your fingers, where they said, skill is in your fingers, tone is in your gear. And that I really like. I thought that summed it up just perfectly. This is a metaphor that I love. Think of the painter metaphor. Think of Vincent Van Gogh doing Starry Night. The brush stroke is his skill. The color is his tone. And that painting could be drastically different depending on the colors that he used. So knowing how to get the right tone that suits the music you're playing, that suits the song, that suits the band you're in, whatever, that's a skill in and of itself, finding the right tone. Yeah, it always comes back to you hopefully being a good player and playing the right kind of music, but there's a reason B.B. King didn't play a Dimebag Daryl guitar into a Mesa Dual Rectifier. It's not his sound. Could he play it and make it sound like him? Probably, but it wouldn't really suit him. Now, the other thing is, is that you actually can sound exactly like other players, and hopefully YouTube has settled this one. I see players all the time on YouTube videos who can nail nearly identically some famous guitar players. You know, if you really take the time to learn their solo, to figure out how to emulate their tone, whether with real gear, which can be expensive, or with a digital emulation, be kind of really deep dive and figure out their vibrato and figure out their phrasing, you actually can sound a lot like famous guitar players. I don't necessarily think it's worthwhile. I think you should, you know, generally find ways to sound like yourself. You know, some people in a tribute band or just as a, you know, musical exercise, it's not necessarily a bad idea. I don't think people should really obsess about sounding like someone else. But it is absolutely doable. And lastly, number one. This one's kind of overarching, so I'm going to explain it. What makes good music and good guitar playing? Now, I'm going to talk about kind of mantras and platitudes that people have under that general umbrella. Because guitar players, a lot of guitar players, really love these phrases of what makes a good guitar player, what makes a good song. And frequently, it actually just comes down to what their preference is. A great example of one is less is more. People will say, people love that one, less is more. You got to play with feeling, you know, feeling over technique. Uh, for people who are, you know, more in the technical kind of music thing, they, you know, it's got to have so many different uh, modes or, or movements in it in order to be good. It, you know, I don't want anything basic or simple. All these things are really just preference. They don't actually have anything to do with what is good music or not. For every time you hear somebody say, less is more, you can find a great song that has a lot of notes in it, that has a lot of very technical precision in it that makes the song what it is. That can still be great music. You can have people who are doing less is more who are not making good music, and all of that vice versa. You can have really technical songs that have all this stuff packed into it that are just sort of dead inside. Now, I actually do believe that there is such a thing as objective beauty. There is something that we're drawn to, and we can recognize good music versus bad music. Sometimes our own personal preference gets in the way of understanding that sort of higher level of musical understanding. I do think that there, you know, you can point at, uh, you know, a very, very successful professional band or orchestra or whatnot and say, yeah, it's objectively better than kind of an amateur group who are trying desperately to slug through a song. But again, many of these things that we like to throw out that say, well, this is what makes it good or that's what makes it good, really just apply to our own preference. The only way we can really know what's making good music is to kind of know inside what are we going for? How good can it be? Is this really something worth listening to? And try and achieve that. Try and reach that higher level of making this as good as it can possibly be. And that could be a number of different things that break all the rules that people like to talk about. So that's what we got. Two amps are always better. Wrong. You have to be loud to get good tone. Wrong. Big strings sound better. 
wrong. Tone is in your fingers. Kind of right sometimes, but most of the way people talk about it is wrong. And it's harder to define good music than the platitudes that we like to throw around. Let us know what you think of those five things. Again, many of you probably know this. This is certainly not all guitar players think this. Apologies for the video title. It's just the world that we live in. But let us know what you think in the comments. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jack Fawcett, and we'll see you next time.